I guess we can get started. I want to thank everyone for coming. I, I really appreciate the, the good turnout. Um, I'm recording this meeting, um, but that is that is so we can post it online for others to uh, to see and uh, and keep up if they can't uh, if they can't uh, be here. But uh, I really appreciate the great turnout. Um, I think we're gonna I think we're gonna have a good summit uh, this year, and I'm I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I am going to uh, to get started. Just uh, share my screen with a presentation. Um, and then we will go from there. Hi. Hey there, Luca. Hi, I had some troubles joining with the audio, so hopefully you can hear me now. Yes. Yep, I can hear you. It's very good, thank you. All right, um, I uh, started a uh, presentation uh, and that kind of summarized the situation right now and, and then kind of where this uh, committee uh, could go and how we uh, how we get from here to a, uh, a an, an event in the fall um, the agenda is an introduction and then I'm going to then we're also going to summarize the survey from February 2015 and a wrap up from last year of the surveys we got we didn't get many back but then we can kind of uh, talk about that uh, then uh, to do's the things that we need to accomplish and then next steps uh, so I guess I'm not sure everyone here knows each other. So it would be probably good if if everybody would introduce themselves, uh, why you're interested in in the summit, and as an icebreaker, we'll say the your favorite editor. We'll do those kind of traditional <laughs> ones. So uh, I don't know who can, who wants to go first. I need to. I can't see the list. There we go. Um, Zoltan, would you like to go first? Yeah, that's right. So uh, my, my name is Ozan Erbay. Uh, I work uh, in, in the core team as a maintainer of the MXS and the Sonic Sea Target. Uh, these are basically all ARM-based development boards. And uh, the reason why, I, why I'm here in, in, the, in, the, in the committee is that uh, last year I have been a, a presenter of a light, for a lightning talk on the summit, and Eric invited me. Uh, so that, that, thanks for the invite, and I hope that I can help uh, in, in any way. Uh, and my favorite editor is Joe. Okay. All right. Uh, Kathy, would you like to go next? Uh, sure. So Kathy Jory, I used to be at Qualcomm Atheros. I'm now at uh, Arduino.org. And uh, Arduino.org, there is a couple. There are a couple of boards that use um, the Open Liberty Linux stack on them, and hopefully, you know, that will continue in the future. So. Still very interested in OpenWRT from a work perspective and just for a fun perspective. Um, so, and I love the community around it. And I don't know about my favorite, I wouldn't call it my favorite editor, but my favorite editor command ever is VI's dot command. I wish every editor had a dot command. What does it do? I don't know VI that all, that well. <laughs> It, it just does whatever you last did again. Oh, so, okay. Cool. Like when you're doing something repetitive and you just like, oh, I don't want to do that again, dot, dot, dot. It's great. Cool. Awesome. Uh, Paul? Hi. So um, part of Imagination Technologies, um, Assurance Manager here. We're using uh, OpenWRT on our creative project. Um, so we're obviously interested in it for that reason, but also because you know, imagination is quite heavily involved in that sort of thing. Um, so a uh, favorite editor, you know what? Well, I haven't been an engineer for so long. I don't even think I can remember what my favorite editor is. <laughs> so I might have to skip that icebreaker. <laughs> if, if, you, if you want to say like something, uh, a word, that's, that's, that works too. I don't know. You don't have to, doesn't have well, to be co-editor. No. <laughs> Uh, I don't have anything else on my head. Sorry, okay. guys. That's okay. All right. Well, thank you, Paul. Uh, Beda? Okay. Hi. I'm Beda Kushata. I am from CZNIC. Uh, we are the, the guys who are doing Tourist Omnia. Maybe you have, you have heard about it. So, and it runs OpenWRT. So, this is why we are interested in OpenWRT. 
uh, I was at the at the first uh, Open WRT summit, and I, I thought that it was a really great idea because uh, finally we 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 got together with the developers and could uh, really fast, very very well and very fast exchange ideas and so on. So I think it was a very good good plan to do it again. So this is why I decided to to help with it if possible. And my favorite editor is Imex. Awesome. Thank you. I, I can say with confidence that Emacs does not work with me. I, I usually get into Emacs, and that means I just have to hard reboot the computer. Wait, <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't see a, a bullet on judging other people's choices now, Eric. <laughs> uh, no, I, I didn't judge. I'm just saying I can't use it. That's all I'm saying. It, it's, it's a judgment on myself, actually. Uh, uh, thank you, Betta, and uh, thank you, Kathy, for pointing that out. I apologize. Uh, uh, Abhijit, uh, you're next. Did I pronounce that yeah. right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, correct. Uh, yeah, Abhijit Mahazani. Uh, I'm working in imagination technologies and like Paul said, like I'm actually leading the uh, creator uh, CF40 of WRT development. So we have just uh, ported the CF40 uh, on, on the open WRT and made that open source in our GitHub organization. So I'm interested from that perspective. So I'm leading a fresh team. Like if we are not actually that experienced with OpenWRT, just uh, just a year now to be complete. Uh, so we needed to actually learn and see the main criteria to joining the summit is like how can we it help me to upstream our stuff to the OpenWRT community. Okay. And my editor favorite is Notepad Plus Plus. What's that? Notepad plus plus. Oh, Damn, I Notepad should have said that. that <laughs> Found Windows, it, it works pretty nicely. Thank you, yeah. Abhijit. Thanks. Uh, Luca? Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Luca Perkov. I'm uh, one of the OpenWRT developers. And uh, I was also very happy with the uh, first event and also the discussions that uh, were taking place on the not official open wrt summit but the, on the elc a uh, year before and uh, looking forward to the next one as well um as for the favorite editor i would say uh, vim vim okay yeah. cool thank you luca i guess i didn't introduce myself um uh for those who uh probably everyone knows me but uh i'm I'm Eric Schultz. I'm the community manager at Purple Foundation. Um, a big part of my job right now is working on uh, board farm work to try to improve uh, testing for OpenWRT um, and uh, making some progress there. Uh, but it uh, seems like I'm well known around the around the Purple and uh, and uh, some somewhat in OpenWRT. Not that well known, I suppose. Uh, why am I interested? Uh, it's my job, but also because I think OpenWRT and uh, and open source are hugely valuable, and uh, we can do lots of amazing work. And my favorite editor is uh, I, that's actually interesting. I say that I don't know if I have one right now. My thing is Atom. I've been using a lot, but. Uh, not, not sure I have a have a favorite, although Vim is is not too bad actually. So, all right, uh, we can get started then. Uh, I just kind of thought I'd go through some of the information we had uh, in the past about uh, you know people's preferences and things like that, so we get a sense of of what is uh, possible and in things we should consider as we move forward. Um, so we did a survey in February 2015. We got I think it was about 60 or 70 responses it was a pretty pretty uh well responded i think i i emailed um the uh open wrt users and the open wrt develop list um and we got some responses and i just thought i'd go through some of the interesting points that i thought were useful in in making some of the decisions we're going to have to make um a question the one of the questions was how interested are you in attending an open wrt conference uh, people were by and large pretty pretty interested there, as you can see. Uh, one of the other questions was was what was the appropriate length of the conference, and, and it was pretty evenly split between a single day and multiple days. Um, we last year we decided, it, you know, for the first time, more than a day was certainly not uh, feasible. We, I, I certainly didn't feel I was capable of 
of doing that. And, and I think generally we thought it was better to start with a single day. Um, but there was a pretty strong uh, set of people that did want multiple days. Uh, the question on the appropriate price uh, was for a half day is free and for a single day is free or it was $50. Uh, I think generally we would like it to be free. I, I don't think there's that's uh, all that much in question. And I think that uh, purple with the uh, funding we have, I think that that's completely feasible and, and very likely. But just thought I'd add it in there. Um, one question that might be interesting is would you travel exclusively to an open WRT conference? Uh, 42 out of the out of the um, set of people did say yes. So it was about 75% said they would. Um, additionally, though, we did ask, you know, how important is attendance to be co-located with another conference? Last year, uh, as most of you know, that we, we co-located with the ELCE conference. So we were um, the day after the conference ended. Uh, I... Uh, it, I would say it's a if you look there, it, it's about um, sixty to seventy percent of people felt that it was uh, either important or helpful for them to uh, to be with another conference, which is kind of understandable. Obviously, if either yourself or a business, it's it's easier to justify for doing multiple things. Um, another thing we asked was, what conferences did you intend to uh, expect to attend? Um, there are obviously a lot of others, which which is and those include things that I, I had forgotten to put in there. Um, I think one of the most notable ones that did come up a pretty reasonably often time was, um, and the name is escaping me. I believe it's in Belgium every year. Fostem. 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 Yeah, Fostem did come up pretty often in the others, but uh, that was, um, but as you see, it was heavily favored towards. Uh, EL, ELCE and uh, LinuxCon Europe, as well as the embedded Linux conference with smaller amounts uh, elsewhere. Uh, the session topics uh, may not be that relevant right now, but just kind of a, there's kind of a general uh, idea of what people thought were topics that were really interesting to them. Um, heavily, it was maintain your own OpenWRT derivative, uh, creating a package, question and answer the core OpenWRT team. Um, and adding support for a device that your company designed, um, but uh, also securing OpenWRT. But it was a it was pretty broad. Uh, another question was where are you based? And uh, this obvious, unsurprisingly, was heavily weighted towards Europe. Um, although there was still about thirty percent of people that did say uh, that they were in the Americas, um, but not too surprising. And when we asked places you would travel it was also heavily weighted towards Europe. 73% uh, said that, whereas about 43% said North America. Um, those are the important things about the, that was the February 2015 survey. So that was well before the conference. The conference um, was in, uh, in October. So we asked that early in the year to get a sense of what people wanted. Uh, the next thing was then we did a post-event survey and we didn't get a really great turnout. This was, uh, you know, it just happened uh, that we just didn't get very good turnout or turnout for the uh, survey, not not for the event. We had a great turnout for the event. Um, but, oh, I have, it's in a separate document I have to open. Um, can everybody see that? Uh, no. Oh, yes. Not yet. It just says post event survey is all we can see. Yep. That should be, oh, no, that isn't the right one. Sorry, that's yes. there. Okay. I, that's it. I know what's happened. Um, oh, goodness. Oh, summit Sorry, wrap Eric, up. Eric. Sorry, Eric, if there, are, if there are important numbers on the slides, could you please re read them up because I'm driving at the moment? Oh, yep, absolutely, Zoltan. Uh, all right, can... No problem. Can everybody see the OpenWRT Summit wrap up? Yeah. Awesome. That yeah, there's the document. Um, so there's a document. It also summarizes some of the uh, the um, key numbers. Uh, we had 82 attendees last year and uh, 54 no shows. Um, the quote was from uh, someone from the uh, Linux Foundation. Their event manager said that that wasn't too bad for a free event. That's kind of generally what they expect. Um, but 
uh, you know, 82, 82 attendees, we were, we were extremely happy with that. That was, it was um, probably beyond uh, kind of, you know, my, my, uh, you know, imagination of what we could get, but it, it was, it was, we were very happy. And I think a lot of people were happy with the result there. Um, the survey results. Uh, we sent the survey out to registered attendees um, and uh, we sent it out on October 28th, closed on November 6th. We only got 12 responses. Uh, if, if, if we ask this again th uh, this year, I think our recommendation is we're going to have people have to, uh, they have to fill out a survey before they uh, get to go to the social event uh, <laughs> so we can get more responses. Um, but we did get 12 responses and those are somewhat useful. Uh, the rating scale uh, for the overall experiences was uh, whether it was a good use of your time from one to excellent and productive, which is five, and that was a 4.833. So it was generally people thought it was a very, it had a very positive experience. Um, the highest rated sessions, which may not be relevant to us right now, uh, were the introducing the OpenWT network subsystem. Yes, the FCC might ban your operating system. Uh, introduction to OpenWRT. Uh, Project Tourist, and uh, do you need really need to fork OpenWRT? Um, uh, I'm not sure what this says up there. Uh, what did you like about the OpenWRT Summit? Um, they were categorized, and, and, and the things we saw were face-to-face -face interacting with people they talked with or heard of, including core team members, a good overall organization. One quote was, it was an open atmosphere. Uh, people said well organized, and uh, another quote was it was the first of its kind. Um, what did they uh, dislike about it? We asked, um, and they were categorized this way: session time management, which was unsurprising. I I, I admit that uh, I was a little uh, overwhelmed with that, so I, I should have done a better job. Um, other people said it was too short. Um, they they didn't have anything they disliked. Someone said nothing. Uh, there were logistics that it was hard to find a hotel due to the ELCE and, and the foot, there was a football game there. Also, there were not enough outlets in the conference room, which is, I guess, a fair point, but not something we have too much uh, control over. Uh, too small of a conference room. Uh, one thing was there was a lot of com companies, but not many communities, which I think is a fair point. We, we did have a, a strong uh, set of, of companies. We had fewer of the OpenWRT related communities. And another one was a few talks to have enough technical detail. Um, what sessions would you like to see but didn't? Uh, one, the one thing that came up multiple times was a roadmap of the OpenWT core team. And then another quote was a peek inside the core team who does what and is still active and who is no longer active. Um, another one was how to start contributing to OpenWRT. Uh, another was hands-on workshops, creating packages, doing special network configurations, etc. Uh, more security related topics, OpenWRT build root structure, and uh, another one was maintaining detailed make file and uh, make file and code writing, make file code writing. So uh, just kind of maintaining and uh, and creating make files. Um, so some other numbers uh, based upon the OpenWRT summit, how has your opinion of OpenWRT changed? is a rating scale from uh, decrease greatly as one to increase greatly of is five with three is no change. Uh, and it was 3.833. So that uh, it increased slightly. People had an increased view of OpenWRT, which is certainly very, very positive and something um, I was happy about. Um, how's your opinion of purple change? This isn't really relevant to this committee, but uh, using the same scale, it was 3.5. So it increased slightly as well. Uh, how often do you think an OpenWT summit should occur? Uh, the questions, the choices were less often than once a year, once a year, twice a year, or more often than twice a year. And all but two said once a year. The other two said twice. So uh, pretty generally of the responses, it was it was once a year. And we also asked uh, how valuable is to you is running the OpenWT summit in conjunction with ELC like we did this year? Um, it was a rating scale from uh, not important at all, which is one, to very important slash critical, which is uh, five. And in that case, uh, we got a 2.9166. So it's somewhat important, um, but of the 12 responses, three of them said it was it was critical to them. It, it was basically a necessity. Um, 
So I would say that 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 the, the connection was valuable, but it wasn't uh, vital to everyone. Um, we had some final suggestions, thoughts, which was coordinate proposals for regional mini summits, meetups, or hackathons, um, and accept requests for grant uh, funding grants from submitted proposals, which uh, Purple is happily doing um, very currently. Uh, a uh, group photo at the summit, uh, an action plan contest, to invite submissions for proposals to improve OpenWT in some way, which is connected to this, uh, which is connected to the previous one for funding grants. So uh, my conclusions that I that I made, and this, these were done in, in uh, November, I made these conclusions, is that it was well received and any future incarnations will be welcomed. Uh, the su summit should probably be associated with ELCE in the future, but that admittedly is up to this committee. Um, more hands-on workshops. Uh, Two-day conference is justified, but obviously there's, you know, increased cost and, and organizational, um, you know, issues and it, it it's difficult, but it's justified, I think, by the community. Um, and improving core team participation is very important. Um, so that's that. Those are kind of like the background of of where we are right now. Um, so from there, um, I, I hope that uh, that gives people a sense. Uh, are there any questions, by the way, about any of that stuff? No. Okay, awesome. Um, the next thing was then kind of like the list of to-dos. What should this community do? And the list of to-dos, I kind of summarized them already on the on the mailing list. But um, the thing was, is the the committee is is the location of the summit. Needs to decide the location of the summit, the date and time of the summit. Uh, finalizing the budget needed from Purple. Um, setting process and guidelines for the session proposals, which is, you know, kind of, you know, uh, asking for how we do that. Um, encouraging and recruiting session submissions, which is, makes sense, and privately deciding on session proposal acceptance. Uh, deciding the post-summit social event and setting the summit schedule, kind of the organizational uh, core of, of this event, um, because uh, this is very much for the community. This is not a, um, for, Purple per se, although obviously Purple is happy to fund it, and we get a you know we a lot of our members have a lot of value in this, but they have value because it's for the benefit of the community, um, and the, the you know the OpenWRT community. Um, other thing that Kathy mentioned was we need to get a wiki started, which is a which is a good point. Um, are there any other to dos that are on that were for that weren't mentioned on that list, but? Uh, aren't covered by one of those areas? Not that I can think of. OK. Well, that's good. Awesome. Um, maybe maybe, maybe one question. Uh, you, you mentioned that one of the results of the survey was that we should get more core developers uh, to participate uh, in the summit. Uh, I'm not sure who, who who should be responsible for this, or uh, uh, but I think it's a it's a relevant relevant point, and mm -hmm. maybe maybe we should be the ones who who should reach out to them and try to convince them to come. I would agree, definitely. We'll, we'll, uh, we can um, uh, better. I I think that you would be uh, that'd be perfect for you, and I I think uh, you and and Luca and Zoltan and and uh, I know Imre is also on this committee but couldn't make it to the meeting I, I think that would be you know great for you guys to to work on uh, as we move closer so yeah we'll, we'll put that in the to-do list and how do we actually get so, yeah add that as basically the encouraging and recruiting session yeah, yeah. submissions is it is, is we want to recruit attendees as well you know we, mm -hmm. we have a certain number of, so basically recruiting attendees recruiting open wrt core members and recruiting a good pool of uh content submissions for the presentations. Absolutely. <clears throat> so I guess sub, a subtask in there is to, um, is it to um, add things that would make it appealing to those people? Yeah, definitely. I would agree. Do you maybe, Eric, know how many uh, presentations were uh, proposed last, last year? Like, were they uh, all acceptable 
for uh, some we, memory jam. I I was kind of in charge of that, and I accepted all of them, um, which is kind of why we kind of had to shove everything in there, and to, and we had some some time issues. Um, but we had, I think, I was thirteen, and I could be off on that number, but it was it was around thirteen or fourteen, if I remember correctly. Um, so it was it was it was pretty solid. Um, I, I it, it required a significant amount of recruiting. I I, I know that I was. Uh, kind of you know, hounding on people at, at towards the end to try and make sure that we got enough submissions. But but it ended up that we actually ended up with too many. So um, I guess that's a positive problem to have. Um, and, and one thing we did last time was we had a certain number of, of pretty lengthy um, presentations that we allowed. And then we had some lightning talks at the end uh, yeah. where you had like five minutes or less. So we can always, it's kind of nice to, if somebody wants to just get up there and, and say something quickly, I think having a section at the end of lightning talks where people can voice stuff and we can tack people on, I, I think that's a nice thing to do. And in general, the sessions, some of the sessions last year seemed a little long to me, like mm -hmm. people went on too long. So we definitely want to determine what's what's the good sweet spot of time for people to present. Absolutely. Totally agree there. Yeah, but both those are, I think, I, I absolutely would agree that lightning talks are, are vital. Um, because it, it was re really good last year, because most of those lightning talks were people things had people had planned ahead, but there were a couple that were just, you know, on the fly, and they brought up interesting topics that were relevant. I mean, it was even a little bit of, a, you know, I want to speak to the open WRT community and hear my thoughts that, about improvements and things like that. So it was, I think that was really good. Um, but yeah, definitely the, the timing is, is going to be an interesting issue. And, and part of that's very difficult ahead of time until you know what the submissions are um, and how do you actually fit everything in. Um, but unfortunately you have to know the, the number of days of the summit and things like that ahead of time. So. So one, so one quick question about the, um, uh, let, let's say, inflow of, uh, of session proposals. So, mm -hmm. how, so if we decide to go with the ERCE, um, mm -hmm. how ma what, what's the, um, let, let's say, possibility of uh, sort of advertising the summit via the ERCE uh, media, ERCE sites and, and, and whatever they have? Um, that's, a, that's a good question. Uh, last year, they they um, allowed the ELCE um, at, because we were um, it considered a co-located event, and that's um, something I have to talk about a little bit. Uh, I'll talk about later. Um, but as a as a co-located event, we got uh, they tweeted about it a few times. They mentioned it in some press releases, and um, we were also part of their uh, through their. If you get an ELCE ticket, you could like do an add-on of the Open WRT Summit. So it was like it's like an advertisement as part of the uh, ticketing system, kind of. They also had a separate ticketing system uh, that worked for people who didn't go to ELCE um, that they made available and and was used regularly for registrations. But it, it, that you know that's kind of separate of that. So. Um, but was it, it was, free for all, or how is that? Uh, yes, Open WRT Summit last year was free, and I, I would strongly hope that we could do that again this year. Um, I think it's almost a necessity. Um, but but that, uh, I really... understand then, like why that ticketing uh, add-on on the uh, ELC because if it is free, then yeah. It, it, part of it was we wanted to know how many people were going to be there. So we had a sense of for like food because we, we bought lunch um, and, and it allows us to plan better uh, the rooms. The other thing is um, it, it the reason it, they do that as an add on is that uh, some of the co-located events, they had a number of them. Ours was free, but other ones are not free. Um, so for those people, it was a slightly more valuable to be part of their ticketing system because then they could also pay for that at the same time. For us, you didn't get that kind of advantage, but it is a nice advertisement, I think. Um, okay, thanks. Yeah. 
it's really it was really helpful from a logistics standpoint we didn't oh, yes. have to do that much you know it's logistics are really painful so having another conference to do the logistics is extremely helpful we just don't have the resources and staff to do all this on our own yeah it's di it's difficult I, it, I guess it could be done but it would be difficult um so I guess that that goes then to the the first to do that I just kind of wanted to say where the situation is right now and ideas that have come in. Um, location suggestions. The the obvious one is ELCE in Berlin. Um, that is slightly uh, adjusted this year due to the fact that ELCE has actually moved and it's no longer going to be. Um, it is in Berlin. It's not where the um, Linux Con Europe is going to be. Um, they are keep that's a separate conference. It's the week after Linux Con Europe um, and in a different place. I, I had emailed the conference organizer um, uh, at, uh, at, at, at a Linux Foundation. Uh, they had said um, they're not really sure on, on, on a, how it's going to work because they may not, it doesn't sound like they're going to have it reserved in the same way where they are for the day after or the day before. It's unclear to me. I, I still have to get that clarification from her. Um, I, I literally just got that email this morning. I, I looked through it and I have to get some clarification. But uh, at the very least, they seem open to the idea. Um, but that is a, uh, I think that's, that's a, we need more clarification to know either way. Other other um, ideas that have been suggested, um, it, you know, Beta had suggested Prague. Um, I, 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 you did suggest Prague. Am I correct on that? Mm, yes, Beta? yes. 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 Because uh, Cizinek was was you know interested in, in helping. Um, I think uh, Imre had suggested Budapest as well. Um, and there's a possibility of co-locating with another event in Europe. Um, I don't know if we. I mean, I don't think we can make that decision on this call because we need to know more but i just kind of wanted to what are the things that are out there um i also think that a location in europe is kind of a like kind of a necessity i don't really think it's feasible to do it like say in the u.s or something um but you know are there other suggestions for, for places that people think we should you know events we should co-locate with or anything like that well, basically, my, my other suggestion would have been the them in Brussels, but but that but that's uh, next year, so um, so it's not, so it's not really doable, and and also pro probably the security situation is not like that that many people would come there. Uh, the other option could be the CCC in Berlin, uh, but but that's again in the Christmas in the Christmas holidays, so that's again a timing which could be pretty unfortunate. Yeah, those those are good ones. Um... It's a possibility. I, I think we should consider those, certainly. Um, I, I have a question for Beda. If we did it in Prague, uh, are there any um, meetups or community or something? Are there any organizations that could help with the logistics aspect of it, or would that be difficult? Well, uh, we should be able to help. Uh, we organize conferences from time to time. We, we did uh, RIPE, uh, ICANN, and, and such things, uh, more, more related to the network, networking stuff and so on. But we, we help with these. It's usually these organizations have their own, own staff, but we help them select the location and, and get into contacts and, and maybe then organize some stuff on the spot. So, so we, we might be able to help uh, in some way. Yeah, so maybe because you have connections in, in your country, if if Purple, you know, if the budget would allow it and Purple provided a budget, you could hire a local events coordination group J just because we, we can't do that from here uh -huh. or okay. even at all. It's too hard. But if we paid and you guys could find someone who can plan the event, then that, that might be a possibility. The, the okay. other, I, 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 the can, other... I can ask my colleague who, who is taking care of uh, organizing these things, and I might 
to get back with some estimate um, price for for doing this and yeah, yeah. so that we can the, maybe the, evaluate it later the other thing the other thing we should do is maybe just create a table of these different locations identify is there a co-located event or would we have to hire an event a local event event planning and then also look at cost of staying like what are typical ho like hotel bookings um that type of thing Definitely. because you know is it cheaper to travel uh, and stay in prague or budapest or berlin or brussels i don't know the answer to that oh okay Sounds mm -hmm. good. Definitely. Uh, Eric, uh, yep. I can see uh, there are like a like couple of events in the August uh, in the Toronto, Linux Con North America and Linux Security Summit. So mm -hmm. is that in Caribbean option? Because well, they're, they're, like, security part is actually definitely hot, right? Like, so if, uh, if we can it's a tie up with that. Oh, it, it's a possibility. I mean, we can look at it. Uh, I, it the it, it seemed like Europe was a pretty strong kind of uh, like that would be pretty strongly valuable. But I mean, if the committee feels you know North America is a better choice and it's a better event, I mean, we can we can certainly look at that. Yeah. Why don't we uh, try and as part of your table, Kathy, just sort of get together or have a, a particular look for other events that we could co-locate with because i guess we're, we're brainstorming here but uh, yep. it might be worth doing a google search and seeing what else might be relevant yeah definitely. yeah that, that would be part of creating the wiki and we can put a table and we can all input ideas to the table maybe that should be our action item for next week is uh everybody try to put at least one suggestion into the table mm -hmm. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, definitely. And um, um, like, how about yeah. like these open WRT core team members? Like, uh, like, should we actually uh, see like who are those members and like can come to give those sessions or something so that like it is feasible for them? Like, if it is already uh, like in the nearby region, so that what are the chances actually getting increased if we choose a location uh, nearby? Uh, that's, I mean, maybe uh, Luca or Zoltan. What do you think? I think uh, that uh, most of the developers were familiar with the uh, events, and then they just need to choose whether they want to come or not. So that's a different kind of. Um, topic so i think knowing when the event is and uh, where it is at and those sorts of things uh, it's well known mm -hmm. okay I, I think the question was was about you know are, is there a are all the developers in europe in which case and we want them to attend in uh -huh. which case europe obviously makes sense or is there some better place than other places for those developers to join us in terms of how their proximity to them mm -hmm. well i would say that the most are in Europe and uh, yeah like Eric said in the beginning like uh, that uh, survey uh, showed that Europe would be nice so to okay, me it's okay. all the same I will have to travel so whether it is in Europe or a bit further it, to me it's all the same mm -hmm. okay yeah basically I, I can only oh. yeah I, I, yeah I can only second that that uh, an event in Europe uh, might be mu much more feasible for the core developers. We've got a couple mm -hmm. of guys in, in North America, like Mike Baker, who is, who is the founder, and mm -hmm. Groz, but, uh, but Groz is not really active. And uh, uh, the last time we were able to get uh, Mike over to Europe, I think, was uh, in 2006 in, in CCC or, 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 or something like that. Uh, Imre uh, would, know, would know better, but, but anyway, uh, the, uh, the uh, place for the event might be much better in, in Europe. Okay. All right. Well, um, I think the the thing then the the takeaway from this is is we need to uh, we need to I'll get the wiki set up and we can we can start on a table of um, things we need to. Uh, to consideration for, for locations. Um, all right. 
Anything else about location we want to discuss right now? Okay. Uh, the other thing is is date, and obviously this is partially dependent on location. I mean, if we're going to co-locate with an event, the day is uh, whenever that event is. Um, just for uh, the feasibility, we probably couldn't do it earlier than, than September, October, um, just for uh, the planning. But it takes just that much time to you know do session, get session planning, and, and making sure that all everything's signed, and we make you know. Um, decisions that are done uh, in a, you know, a reasonable manner, but um, that is, uh, you know, done relatively uh, quickly, but, you know, taking our time enough to make sure we're making solid decisions. So, so, so we're saying between September and December, we, we definitely want it this year, right? Um, I would think we would want it this year, but I don't think it's like a, I don't know if it's like a hard requirement. Um, the, the only reason the date is relevant uh, is super relevant for purple side is simply budgeting. The big thing is, right. is, 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 um, you know, art as president, he just needs to know where to put it in the budget and know, you know, do I budget it for this quarter or this quarter? Um, mm -hmm. that's, that's why it's most relevant. We would obviously like it this year, but I don't know if there's a, a hard requirement that we can't do it at say a FOSDEM in, which is end of January, early February. It's, I, I don't think there's a requirement of that, not that I know of. But okay. you know, just uh, I think I think a uh, a minimum, it, you know, uh, we can't probably do it before September or October. Uh, it would probably be pushing it, given the given that it's the beginning of May. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's what I wanted to ask you. So, um, how how much it took you to plan the previous event so how much before the event you actually started planning these sorts of things um i started planning um it was kind of in my in on the back burner um from very early on in the year like even february uh, just kind of looking at it a little bit and i was working more or less full time um at that time i'm not working full time for purple right now i'm working half time but um I was taking a significant, uh, a minimal period of my time, I would say, at that point, until about July, and that's when I really started, um, uh, really starting digging in and taking, you know, really significant periods of my of my uh, time, um, and it was primarily uh, I was working on. It. That said, I would have, in retrospect, I wish I had started earlier, um, but uh, that's a. Uh, it, it took at least a good, you know, it was a lot of work up until October. So the beginning of October. So I would say two or three months. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it, that that said, you you did all of the session planning, scheduling, yes. posting. I mean, everything was on your plate. And if if we can, as a team, divide up some of that uh, some of that oh, effort, yeah. that would help you out. That it'll help me out and also make a better conference. That's that's as much as anything I care about is making sure that this uh, meets the needs of the community going forward. So that's important. Um, and and also for things like PR, you you want to have a, a decent period of time ahead of time too. So uh, you don't want to put it. Uh, you want to have time for people to know about it and plan schedules as well. So actually, that's a good point. We don't have PR. Well, we have a recruiting in our to-do list, but I should specifically add PR because that's a thing that we might want to budget yeah. getting some yes. expert time for. Yes, and, and Purple has a PR team. So it, it's it's something that I, I, I don't know if, I would have to talk to Art. Um, I mentioned budget ahead. I don't know if that's included in what he's budgeting, whether he's including uh, that PR cost. Or if yeah, that's I, I think item. we I can know. we can definitely get Purple's yeah. PR behind it. We just have to create the content. Absolutely, absolutely. All right. Um, support from Purple. Uh, the is a uh, little over uh, sixty thousand dollars is budgeted. Uh, it includes any of the travel and lodging, which is for um. Uh, the uh, sessions, you know, if we if we have people come for sessions, we pay for their travel and lodging. That would be included in that, uh, and also for art and myself. So, um, for the conference itself, is about. I mean, if 
probably safe to say around 45 to 50. I mean, if we're talking that the traveling lodging is going to be really high end or, or really expensive. Um, but I, I think it's uh, that's kind of the general uh, gist um, of of where we are. Uh, last last year, we budgeted, I think, fifty thousand dollars. I don't think we came even really that close to it. Uh, I think we were under forty thousand. Um, so that is uh, that's kind of the general sense of what it cost last year. Um, also, Purple is happy to provide uh, the staff support, including myself and, and anyone else we have. PR and uh, ability to finalize and sign agreements. Purple's happy to happy to do that. Um, I, you know, I want I, part of the reason I put this slide in is to make clear that you know this is we, this is really the the commit. We very much want the committee to do this. We don't want this to be a you know a purple event. Yes, purple's paying for it. And yes, we're sponsoring it, and we want to you know have our name there as well. But ultimately, this is this we really want this to be for the community, um, and we're providing. The, the resources possible to make that possible as much as possible. So, yeah, basically we want we want the message to be this is an open WRT summit that is sponsored by Purple, and yep. in the future, like it can be sponsored by other people and company, you know, other companies as well. It's like it, as it grows, you 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 have lots of sponsors at at Linux Foundation events, yep. right? So. This happens to be at the size where Purple can afford the budget to put something mm -hmm. on. So it's an open WRT summit event, a community event sponsored by Purple. Yep, very much. And it, I would would like to point out, while I don't foresee us having the need, you know, we could theoretically budget the the committee could theoretically spend, let's just say for you know, argument's sake, seventy five thousand dollars. It's just that Purple has only budgeted this amount. You, we could get sponsors or whatever. I, I don't think that's probably a, a likely occurrence that we would need. Um, I, I don't even know if we'll spend this much money, but it's uh, the point is that's what Purple is uh, has budgeted. So, you no, know, basically, basically from my end, even 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 this amount of uh, budget is is very generous from Purple. So. Um, Thank so, uh, give, so give, give, given last year's experience, um, as you say, we're, we're going to likely uh, pre, uh, fit into this uh, budget pretty easily. I guess, I guess, uh, if, I, I guess if we go with EICE, uh, then, then their costs and, and their expenses have, haven't increased uh, that, that much. Yeah, that's an interesting point. I, I haven't gotten a number from them. My assumption is it'll be a little cheaper. And the reason I, I think um, we we kind of budgeted around um, in our internally, we're like, yeah, it'd probably be around, um, you know, in a, around $10,000, give or take, um, is what they their fee would be. I don't know if it's going to be that. It may be higher, maybe lower. Um, my assumption is it may be a little lower. The only reason being that ELCE is no split um, off from... Uh, Linux con, whereas previously they were um, happening at the same time. So you're getting fewer people at the event. So one would assume it might be a little cheaper. I don't know if that's my assumptions at all correct. Um, and that, that that budget amount is 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 kind of in our minds a little little bit more than is necessary. But they haven't really got back to us yet. I, I, I'm the, waiting for numbers from them. The interesting thing, though, about ELCE split is I think it's similar to what happened in uh, April in San Diego's ELC, the Embedded Linux Conference in North America. It mm -hmm. switched, and instead of being joint with Linux Con, Apache Con, whatever those things are, it now is joint with Open IoT. And the oh. same thing is planned in Europe. From what I recall, last time I looked, the same thing is planned that they'll have an Open IoT summit, and that's actually very relevant in my opinion to open wrt because in the iot uh, industry in that ecosystem you need gateways and gateways are nothing more than wi-fi routers with even more connectivity added on you know add bluetooth and add zigbee z waiver 15.4 thread or weave or blah 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 so I actually think it's pretty relevant to be co-located not just with ELCE but with the Open IoT Summit. Um, that's they're joint, they're together. 
Okay, I didn't. I did, guess I didn't realize they were doing that. But yeah, yeah, so it's it, in it, October eleven to thirteen in Germany. Yep. Okay, that's the that's the ELCE date. So yeah, it must be the same time. Um, yeah, it, it's it's a little bit different because they're doing it in a hotel this year. Uh, so I, it's a little bit smaller than last year because last year they had a you know convention center. But obviously, when you're combining like three events, you're going to have a lot of people there. So I'm not really sure at what effect that has on budget. I mean, we're, I. I sent out my email and uh, and she said uh, I saw it this morning and uh, Kara from uh, Linux Foundation said yeah she just get back to me but um, uh, that that's another thing is figuring out you know what is the cost for renting whatever whatever this is as well um, that that's relevant to the budget I mean if it's going to be uh, something that's say fifteen thousand dollars maybe more valuable than one that's uh, five thousand dollars because she, the particular group of people that comes or vice versa. You just, it, it, that needs to be considered, I suppose. So Eric, I have a, just a logistics question on this, this meeting that we just had. If I took some notes, um, you want me to send them out just to the people on this planning committee or should this be published more broadly? I think it doesn't matter to me. I mean, the, the planning committee is certainly there, but um, if somebody else should wants just... to, should I just send it to the purple WRT mailing list, basically? Notes? I think, yeah, I think both would be fine. Um, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, oh, we're almost out of time, so I'll, I'll go through my last few slides. And next steps, uh, organize the effort. Uh, do we want a chair? Do we want subcommittees? Um, we kind of started the subcommittees. Do we want a chair? Uh, that uh, Someone who's here or not, I don't know. Um, that, that that should be you, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We all okay. nominate you, Eric. <laughs> okay, thank you. I accept your nomination. Okay, thank you. Um, I didn't want to assume that. That's that's fine. But okay, I will do that. Um, and then, kind of generally, it'd be nice to decide on the location or date by the end of May or mid June. Um, and then my question was, what did the committee need to know to do so? Um, and we kind of talked a little bit about that we're going to do a uh, get to do that table, but um, I don't think end of May's a requirement. Mid June's probably kind of a more of a harder deadline on you know location and date. It would be nice to have that that figured out, um, so we can start telling people and things like that. And then we we kind of need to know the the budget, um, and uh, we can't we're probably not going to decide that on. Um, you know, this call or the next call, but just kind of the general sense of, you know, what do we want to spend for event location, flight and lodging and social events and all that stuff. So um, I guess what, what does the, what is the committee? Um, obviously we, we already kind of have the, um, the idea of, you know, the wiki and the, and the table. Uh, what else does the committee feel that we need to know you know, before the next meeting, which, by the way, we need to set the next meeting as well. I forgot to put that in there. Um. One question from me is, uh, means I just wanted to understand, like, like you said, that budget includes the traveling. Uh, so the traveling of the guests, guests means those all the attendees also also been sponsored? Last year, we sponsored um, speakers, and I think we may have sponsored one or two core team members. Um, well, we and only then, sponsored if they really needed the travel needed assistance. It, yes. Basically, it's on an as-needed basis. Like you're a student, or you work, you're a community okay. developer, and you you weren't able to come some other way. If you can have your company, a lot of people, even myself included, the company paid for it because we were going to this conference and we extend another day for the summit. So we encourage most people to have their companies pay for it. And if you really need travel assistance, then you submit a proposal and why you need the yeah. travel assistance. And then we have just a fixed budget. It's not endless for travel. Mm -hmm. It's like yeah, here yeah, we'll yeah. allocate this much money, it. and as you I'm may, you know, you may end up paying more on your own dime, but at least you get yep. a, a bulk of it paid for. Yeah, okay. it, it was. It was uh, last year. It ended up that we thought we were going to spend more on speakers, um, you know, paying for their flight and lodging. Ended up that we it was we only had a few that because most people their their company paid for it um, by and large. Definitely. So 
it wasn't an issue. But it is something we need to have, you know, obviously available. Yeah, All right. that was expected, but just wanted to confirm because the guest. Yep. Yeah, thanks. Yep, no problem. <laughs> All right. So uh, we only have like one minute left for the end of the meeting. When do we want our next meeting to be? Um, my initial thought was was every other week. Is that not enough? Is that, I mean, I don't think that's too much, but do we want to do every week for now? Well, if we're aiming for, well, let's say, I know you said mid-June, but if we can try and aim for end of May, that would give us a buffer. That's mm -hmm. only, what, four weeks away. So yep. uh, I'm concerned that we'll start filling in this wiki and it, it will sit there for two weeks. <laughs> yep. So okay. I think that, I think the questions are going to be a bit organic. As, as new information yep. comes in, more questions will come up. So maybe we should have one next week and then reassess. I think that's reasonable. It is... Is the same time uh, next week, is that acceptable for people? I don't know if it's going to work for everyone, but um, we'll at least get the, get the announcement out today, if that's fine with everyone. Uh, for me, it's ideal this, this time, the same day. Yeah, it works you for can? me. You can? Okay. Awesome. It works, uh, works for me too, as well. <clears throat> awesome, Zoltan. Okay, so we will plan on uh, next week at the same time. Uh, that's 8 a.m. Pacific, and you can translate that to your to your local time. Uh, so uh, we'll also put it on that uh, calendar feed that we had. Um, and I think we should have a few more people because I know a lot of there are a couple people that are busy at uh, um, Battle Mesh this week, which is unfortunately I completely forgotten about for the scheduling. But all right. Well, thank you everyone for coming. I won't keep you any longer. I really appreciate it. And I think we're going to do a, an awesome job. So thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.